many of video games claim to be the next big thing? Unfortunately for them, most of the time they aren't. Whether the developers actually believe they could be the next big thing or just trying to ramp up sales varies from game to game. But the truth is very few actually break through. This list deals with games past and present which just didn't get the players or the traction to really go anywhere. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 next big thing video games nobody played. Number 10, Battleborn. Things could have been oh so different for Battleborn. The success of both PUBG and Fortnite proves two fresh IPs can compete in the same genre if they're different enough. But Battleborn was simply crushed under the weight of Overwatch. In fairness, Blizzard's hero shooter still stands as one of this decade's best games. It's tough competition. Battleborn even had some features Overwatch lacked, like the skill tree Overwatch 2 is set to adapt. It lacked the pick up and play feel of Tracer's Gang though. Battleborn was good once it got going, but had a much steeper learning curve. The hero's shooter charm is its heroes. By Battleborn requiring a few rounds to get used to someone, the appeal of switching to find a character which suited was massively diminished. Within just two months of its release, Overwatch came out and its regular player base dropped to under 1,000. Servers were eventually permanently shut down in January of 2021. Number 9, Akami. Akami is a truly gorgeous game and one which holds an unfortunate world record. It has the lowest sales of any game ever to win a major Game of the Year award. These sales figures? Around 200,000 in the first year, meaning it was outside the top 100 selling games in its year of release, 2006. For reference, 2018's major Game of the Year winners, God of War and Red Dead Redemption, sold 10 million and 17 million in the same length of time. Admittedly, modern games just do sell more, but even in 2006, Oblivion won Game of the Year at the same time as Okami and sold 3.5 million. Akami has been released time and again on different consoles and the figures finally look a little bit healthier. Originally out for PS2 and Wii, it's been ported to the PS3, PS4, Xbox One, PC and Nintendo Switch, bringing its lifetime sales up to 2.8 million. That's far more respectable, but Akami's cell shaded mix of action adventure meets Zelda through the eyes of a wolf was supposed to be a game changer. Now it's just a curious footnote in history. Number 8. Pokemon Pokemon Go. Remember the glorious summer of love in 2016? Everyone played Pokemon Go and nothing else mattered. Age, gender, religion, skin color, political allegiances, they were all somehow transcended by Pikachu. It's a shame that Pokemon Go was on this list, but the numbers don't lie. The bubble of friendship was always going to burst, but the real shame is that Niantic waited until everyone had jumped ship before they implemented the new features. Improved nearby radars, adventure sync, raid battles, raid hours, shiny legendaries, special research, special tasks, community days, Team Rocket trading, TMs, they've all improved the game massively for those who stuck around. In truth though, it was such an of the moment game that it was destined to have a massive drop off. What's more surprising is that the only game to capitalize on it since is Harry Potter, made by the same developers, although less commercially successfully. Pokemon Go currently averages about 5 million daily players, which look, that does seem to really be stretching our definition of no one. However, at its its peak, the official daily play figures exceeded 50 million, which once you factor in that the game hadn't officially released in areas like China and all of Africa, could kick it up to 100 million. If that's true, it makes for a huge 95% drop off rate. Number 7, For Honor. PvP online is less the next big thing than it is a consistent staple of gaming since it moved to the internet. However, For Honor's inventive style did pose itself as a real game changer. For a brief sliver of time, it looked like it would be too. It allowed you to play as either a knight, a samurai, or a viking, each of which came with different fighting styles and varied approaches. It forced you into close combat, but gave you a surprising amount of freedom and tactical depth. But what's the best way to ruin a game all about lightning quick decision making? hosted on the cheapest peer-to-peer -peer servers you can find. The game lagged, players dropped out unexpectedly, rage quits were abound, and the connection was generally shoddy. After enjoying decent opening sales of just under 1 million, it lost a whopping 95% of its player base in just three months, staggering mismanagement of a potentially great online game. Number 6, Project Spark. 
For Project Spark, the success of Super Mario Maker and to a greater extent the unmascotted dreams proves that it really could have been the next big thing. Project Spark was a design game exclusive to the Xbox One, which released in 2014 and was killed off two years later. The funeral was sparsely attended and poorly catered. It was supposed to dig deeper than Little Big Planet or Minecraft, letting creation truly run wild. The Kinect could be used for it too, and the general idea was to either build a world from scratch or customize a pre-designed one. The problem was it was far too fiddly and the actual gameplay of created levels felt like a rush job. There were simply too many barriers to it and the lasting creation is Linkin Park's Guilty All The Same video, which was made through the engine. What remains the worst thing about it though was how it bastardized and sanitized Conker into a squeaky clean mascot to help promote it. Not only did it completely fail, it added even more insult to the once great Conker. Number 5. The Order 1886 The Order 1886, or as it's better known, QuickTime the game. It's easy to point to 2018 as proof of PlayStation's utter dominance of exclusives this generation, especially when backed up by Horizon Zero Dawn and Uncharted 4 in the two years previously. Back at the start of the generation though, PlayStation's exclusives were appalling. Xbox's rise wasn't much better as they had Forza doing all the heavy lifting until Cuphead came along, but this list isn't about them. No need to start a console war. Both of the big hitters got off to a bad start. Of those though, The Order 1886 was arguably the one with the biggest bluster behind it. Its claims of reinventing the Soulsborne style genre turned out to mean adding long loading times and lots of quick time events. It would take until Neo and Sekiro for The Order's promise to be fulfilled, just not by them. A solid outing, but not one which lived long in memory. A popcorn flick of a game. Number 4. Fallout 76 is it cheating putting Fallout 76 here? Just an excuse to kick it while it's down? Honestly, maybe. The uncomfortable truth for Fallout fans though is that Fallout 4 could easily have made the list instead. Starting with Fallout 76 though, the scandals are too many to list here. In fact, they once had a list entirely of their own, one which predates arguably the biggest scandal of the premium passes. It tried to bill itself as the next big thing, a more focused RPG in the MMO mold. One set to unite two of the biggest genres in gaming. Right from the start though, very few expected it to do so. Sales were so poor, some stores were giving away physical copies with console bundles that already contained the digital copy. Even those who did pick it up abandoned it almost immediately. I know I sure did. Fallout 4 meanwhile enjoyed Bethesda's most successful launch ever and peaked at almost half a million concurrent players on Steam in November of 2015. A year later that figure dropped to 60,000. Not bad, but not great. After such a huge launch, Bethesda will surely be annoyed that they couldn't kick on. Number 3. Evolve while not an entirely new idea as an asymmetrical PvP, Evolve did have some new ideas. In a five-player match, four would play as hunters and one as the monster. It was an idea designed to offer a different gameplay experience, not too dissimilar from the cancelled Fable Legends game. The gameplay itself, however, was clunky and uninspired. A launch DLC which cost an eye-watering 136 bucks would have been pricey in any game, but to shove it in Evolve just felt insulting. Within a month, players struggled to even find matches, so Evolve, a full release title with a AAA price point, went free to play after just over a year. That naturally saw a massive boost of 3,600% to the online player base, but they didn't stick around. The game was put down shortly after, delivering a bark much worse than its incredibly tame bite. Number 2. Watch Dogs like Pokemon Go, Watch Dogs can point to its respectable sales figures as proof positive that no one plays is incredibly harsh. In fact, the game sold well enough to warrant two sequels. However, Watch Dogs painted itself as a GTA killer, one set to revolutionize the open world genre. It was to give you complete control of the universe around you at your fingertips. You were God, creating the world in whatever image you saw fit. In the end, you could change the traffic lights and set off some steam pipes. Watch Dogs isn't here because of monumentally low sales or player activity, but because it fell almost laughably short of being the next big thing. 10 million in sales for a new IP is huge. It makes Watch Dogs look like an imposter on this list, but it's less than a third of GTA 5's daily player base of 33 million, a figure they sustained for over a year. Number 1. Artifact 
The big one has been saved for last, or rather, the small one. Some of the games here have had disappointing sales figures or player drop-off, but that's nothing compared to Artifact. It began with a fairly modest player base of 60,000 in November of 2018, a figure which dropped to 1,500 in just two months. By July, the number had fallen so low it was in double figures. Yep, you read that right, from 60,000 to less than 100 in seven months. Why such a sudden drop though? Well, take your pick. Artifact is a collectible card game in the vein of Magic the Gathering and was even designed by MTG's creator Richard Garfield. It was made by Valve and set in the Dota universe and immediately felt like a game no one had particularly asked for. Aside from the comments complaining that Valve should be focused on Half-Life 3 though, that Artifact had to be bought while competitors were free to play was unpopular. This was made worse by it still containing microtransactions and was hit with a barrage of pay to win complaints. It was review bombed almost immediately, unfavorably compared to Hearthstone and MTG, and just generally felt like a huge waste of everybody's time and money. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other next big thing video games nobody played. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account, or I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.